man of God. Put your hands together as he comes to preach tonight. Come on, mic check, one, two, can you hear me in this tent? Come on, I came to serve notice on every demon that can hear me under the sound of my voice. That this will be the last night that you torment. This will be the last night. Come on, I'm talking to the devil right now. This will be the last night that you inflict with disease and pain. This will be the last night in the generation bloodline because it may run in their family, but they are where it runs out. Are there any bloodline curse breakers in the house? Come on. Don't tell me that you need a worship band to get hype. Because I'm not talking about emotionalism. I'm talking about the spirit. I'm praying that your eyes are enlightened to see what the Holy Spirit is doing because you are on the divine timeline. You shouldn't be anywhere else. If you drove three and four hours like the people that were sending me texts in my text community, can I tell you it's worth the gas money for what you came to experience. For those of you who came from different states, can I tell you on your journey, it wasn't an activation of fuel. It was an activation of faith. Something began to happen where you said, I will be healed, I will be delivered, I will be set free. And let me just tell you, some of you have a mother that was never willing to go to that level of desperation. Some of you have a grandmother that was never willing to grow, go to that level of desperation. Some of you, your father is dead, and all he handed you was a generational curse of adultery. Some of you, your father, your grandfather, a generational curse of addiction. But I I've got good news for you. You are different. A royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a called out one. You couldn't die. You couldn't get up, give up. You couldn't have killed yourself when you wanted to. The suicide was blocked because there's something inside of your belly. Deep calls to deep. There's something that cause you to put the gun down there's a reason why you didn't die in the car accident and y'all are about to see the reason why You heard the stories that your family told you about how you were supposed to be aborted, but you weren't aborted. Because just like Moses got floated down the river in a wicker basket, there was a purpose that was bigger. And so there's a reason why you're here. <laughs> oh, hey, Rebe Shindri Ayanomondrie. Oh, you are in a prophetic timeline. You are in a moment in history. Oh, come on, somebody, begin to stir it up. You're not a Baptist anymore, I will tell you. You're not a Presbyterian anymore, but you're probably not a Pentecostal either. You are a blood-bought believer. Believer with access to the fullness of the kingdom you are come on we're not talking about the fire of emotionalism we're talking about the same fire that John the Baptist said Jesus would bring come on come on stay in this atmosphere of expectation Stay. I got good news for the overflow. I have noticed that God saves something for the people who don't fit inside the venue. And so I got good for news for you all the way in the back. I got news for you all the way on the side. There is an extra touch for you tonight. Let me just say this to create a level of expectancy. And I'm, what I'm about to tell you, this preacher believes it. All diseases are curable through Christ. Oh, there may not be a pill for it. The pill may help the symptoms, but not the root. But I know the great physician. 
And let me just tell you this. I hope you didn't come to see Jesse and Parker Green. I certainly hope you didn't come to see a ball-headed Italian Mike Signorelli. But the Bible says, if Christ be lifted up, that he would draw all men unto himself. So let me get this straight. The healer today is Jesus. The deliverer today is Jesus. There is no demon that will not be accessed and sent to the abyss in this place. If you believe. Let's set some ground rules. Let's set some ground rules. Let me just tell you like this. (laughs) I'm going to go old school. Is that all right? If you are going to operate in doubt, we've already had a gospel presentation. We literally could have ended it right there, to be honest with you. Because the the gospel is the power unto salvation. Where there's salvation, there's deliverance and healing. So now that we've set this atmosphere and we've gotten past the gospel presentation, and I'm saying this in love, if you're going to operate in doubt, I'm going to give you an opportunity to leave the tent now, to go into your car and drive back. If you came for the power of placebo... (laughs) If you came for a psychological effect, or if you're somebody that's going to look with a level of skepticism and criticism, I want to invite you right now to leave the tent, to get back in your car, and to actually say, you know what, let me just, I need to deal with this. I need to search the scriptures. I need to watch some more YouTube videos. I don't know what you need to do. But I think the worst thing that you can do is stay in an environment like this and have that spirit and operation on the inside of you and get in the way of what God wants to do. Sometimes Jesus will remove people from the room before he does a resurrection. And see, I've got to tell you, there is no room for doubt in this place I'm talking genetic diseases can be healed as he recodes the genetic strand in every fiber of your being I'm talking mental illness like schizophrenia I'm talking there is nothing I say nothing that my Jesus can't do and I'm demanding that you come into alignment with my faith because I will not come into agreement with your fear Oh, I'm feeling sassy tonight. (laughs) Okay, now turn to your neighbor and say, well, you didn't leave, did you? (laughs) Come on, tell them you're one of those, aren't you? (laughs) Why don't you try try to take a seat for a few moments? (laughs) Come on, nobody left. You know, in New York City, people leave when I say that. In New York City, they say, well, we got to (laughs) go. We can still make it to the, I don't know, the restaurant. It's such an honor and a privilege to be here. Uh, Jesse and Parker are two of my favorite people on the planet, and they spur me on. Matter of fact, I just want to say, one of the mandates that God gave me tonight was to actually deliver people from the spirit of poverty And when you started to speak that, I was like, oh, wow, we're flowing already. And then that gospel presentation, you took half of my scripture, so I'm going to try to navigate around that. (laughs) But it's a beautiful thing when there's unity. Jesus prayed that we would be one. And so tonight, I want to make sure we deal with that. Um, I'm here. I send my love on behalf of my wife, Julie, and my lovely daughters, Bella and Everly. And they couldn't be here. I know many of you were replying back to the emails and the texts, and you're like, I can't wait to meet meet Julie. I'm so sorry. (laughs) You're going to have to be left with me. Um, It's okay. And so I pastor a great church called V1 Church, and we're based out of New York City, and we've got campuses all over. But um, I might move. I might move. (laughs) I might move. I want to I want to start I want to get something out of the way because I promised myself I, if I didn't start here I'll never get back to it because I have a feeling that once we get this thing off the runway it's no turning back. So um Jesse and Parker could you just stand right here in front of everyone? I want to release a word over you and I this is something that I, I want to do publicly. I want to acknowledge it. Are you guys filming? Can we get the team to film? Okay, so I want to release this word that the Lord gave to me. It's a simple word, but it's a word that I feel, especially because there's something about tonight, you know, like it's like a first, it's a stepping in. So in Obadiah, the 17th verse, 
it says, but on Mount Zion, there will be deliverance and it will be holy and Jacob will possess his inheritance. Then when you skip down to verse 20, and this is Obadiah chapter 1, it says, And the exiles of the host of the Israelites will possess the land of the Canaanites as far as Zarephath. And the exiles from Jerusalem who are in Seraphar will, will possess the cities of Negev. And then this is verse 21. It's very important. It says, The deliverers will ascend Mount Zion to rule over the mountains of Esau, and the kingdom will belong to the Lord. So the, the word that the Lord gave me is that this territory is a prophetic Zion. Wow. And what you see in Obadiah is that Zion was not just a place of deliverance, but it's where those who were delivered became deliverers. Wow. And so verse 17 and verse 20, Zion is a designation geographically. And the Lord told me that when you selected this place, that this has become a territorial pattern after Zion. And it, in the hallmark of it, will be, people will come to get delivered, but also they will leave commission to be deliverers. Not only that, but very significant people in the kingdom will try. I feel the anointing all over this. Very significant people in the times to come in the kingdom will trace their lineage to this territory. And they will say, I came to this place as, as, as if it was coming to Zion, where there was deliverance, and then I became a deliverer. And they will tell the stories, and they will trace. It's like this is a place of inheritance, which is lineage. And so everybody just stretch your hands towards them. I want to pray because I'm designating this place tonight prophetically as a, a type and a shadow and a pattern of Zion, where there will be deliverers and there will be deliverance. So, Father, I thank you that there is a marker and that you will cause God even their tent post to be extended. And here within this prophetic Zion that there will be those that, Lord, they, they make that transition from delivered to deliverer. And, Father, I thank you that tonight marks the beginning of a heritage and a lineage Father, that people will trace their roots back and say that's when it started. And Father, I thank you that because they get a picture of possibility in this place, that they would then go and create other Zions as an extension of this Zion, this place that functions like a, a Zion. And Father, we say let it be so. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Everybody say the word repent. repent. You know, I'm afraid that in far too many of our churches, we've become honest sinners because we learn confession without repentance. And what we say in most of our churches is, and from the lead pastor on the pulpit to the crowd, we're all struggling. Well, let me just tell you, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we dare not cheapen the cross by struggling with sins that he's already conquered. We've got to eliminate this theology that gives Christians permission to continue to go back to the filth and the vomit. The Bible says that a dog will return to its vomit. The science behind it is that the dog that has a very highly refined sense of smell can actually perceive the undigested bits of food in the vomit. So they go back to the vomit not to lick up the bile. Isn't this disgusting? but to actually get the morsels of what they think is still digestible food. Wow. So what happens is you go back to the toxic narcissistic relationship for the little bit of love that you felt. You go back to the abusive Jezebelic Ahab pastor and the whole demonic infrastructure of that church for the little bit of opportunity they gave you to minister. Who am I talking to right now? So here's the thing. We are going to make up our minds that we are going to repent and stop going back to vomit. And if you do vomit demons out, let it be the last time we see vomit. <laughs> and I just want to say, you will not find in the Bible the term soul ties, but you will find the concept and there are many of you that have these ungodly soul ties that have been created through sexual promiscuity fornication and adultery 
There's many of you in this place that have even these soul ties that are connected to, uh, I'm, I'm just going to call it like I call it. Can I be honest? I'm, I promise you by the time this is over, I will be your best friend. I got to cut you in the beginning. And then when it's over, you're like, that was a surgery, not a stabbing. But you, you have these soul ties where you are connected in the spiritual realm to leadership and you find yourself obsessing over a church that hurts you that you haven't even attended in years. And so I've got such an assignment tonight and a mandate from heaven to not just set you free, but whom the sun sets free is free indeed. In Romans chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? So understand that you're here because his kindness has drawn you to this place to say, I'm not here to condemn you. I'm not here to beat you up. But I am here to expose everything so that I can set you free from everything. So the work of a deliverance minister And tonight I come to you in the form of a deliverance minister, is to uncover everything. Every rock has to be turned over. There would be people who say, I don't have any bugs in my backyard. And I would say, get down on your knees and you'll see them. (laughs) And there's some Christians, I don't have any demons. Get down on your knees and you'll see them. You know, you've got to learn how to turn over every rock. You've got to learn how to expose everything. And the enemy, the Bible says that he is crafty. He's likened to a snake. Snakes hide. They slither. They kind of wait for an opportune time. It talks about that the devil is like a lion that prowls. What do, when lions are on the prowl, they're not roaring. They're silent. And so I expect the demons inside of you to be as quiet as they can while I'm around. So here's the thing. We're going to have to make up our minds. Do not cooperate with the devil because there are people that come into a cooperation with the devil and you've got to make up your mind I am not going to cooperate with the devil sometimes people will feel demonic manifestations and they'll try to hide them they'll do whatever they can be cool be cool be cool be cool be cool let me just tell you the Bible says in one instance it says confess your sins one to another that you may be What if I told you that there's some healing you've never experienced because there's a level of pride that never lets you manifest when it was time to manifest? There was a level of pride that never lets you repent when it was time to repent. Because if you really lowered your pride, you would say, oh, God, I know there's something that has violated your will. I know there's something that I repeatedly go back to. This preacher is telling the truth. And, oh, Lord, before anybody else discovers it, let me expose it. God, and let me just tell you this. We're going to do mass deliverance tonight. Part of that is going to be medically verifiable miracles. Part of that is going to be people writhing around all over the floor and, and looking all dusty and dirty. But I'll tell you, you'll end up cleaner on the inside than you've ever been in your life. (laughs) So let's make our mind up. We're not going to judge anyone who sins differently than us. Because we're going to have a moment of public repentance, and you're going to hear people saying things out loud. You're like, no, they didn't do that. Or you're going to be like, ooh, you're nasty. Well, you're nasty in another way. And I think in most of our churches, the pastor, you got one cup of coffee in one hand, you know, and you're sitting in a padded chair because we don't even have wooden pews anymore. And you have an LED light show like a Disney extravaganza. And they've played all your favorite songs like a Christian jukebox. And then you get to the end of a motivational speech that they're calling a sermon, but there was only one scripture. And then the preacher says, if you want to accept Christ, raise your hand. And with your hand without a coffee, you put down your bagel and you raise up that hand. And they say, let's all say this prayer together. And then you go home and you sin the same way you sinned right before you got to church. And so everybody's like, I don't know if a Christian can have a demon. You know what I say? How do you know they're all Christians? (laughs) Because standing in a garage does not make you a car, just like standing in a church does not make you a Christian. So there comes a moment where repentance, and here's the thing, if you, y'all ain't going to like me. I just feel like I won't even look at you while I say this. 
If I, I wonder if you can't say it out loud and let your whole family hear of you repent of it, then how deep is that repentance? Did you hear what I just said? Oh, Lord, forgive me for pornography. Masturbation. No, I'm telling you that desperation has a sound. Ooh, I feel the anointing on that. De because when you stand before a holy God on judgment day, nobody's going to say, please let me, let me get in. Please, God. Please, God. I gave him the offering when Jesse asked. They're going to say, oh, God, please, God, please, no. So let the cry and the desperation of our repentance be louder than our cries to beg him to get into a kingdom after the door is closed. And people ask me all the time, why do you see so many deliverances? Because we actually repent. So let me read another scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret. Whereas worldly grief produces death. So here's what should begin to stir inside of you, and you should feel it coming over you even as I'm preaching if, if the Holy Spirit is co-laboring with me in this place. There should be this godly grief because oftentimes the first time you committed that sin, your conscience was strong enough to produce a form of grief. Do you remember the first time you did it and you're like, oh, I feel dirty. Then the second time you did it, you violated your conscience again. And you were like, I really need to stop doing this. And the third time you did it, you said, I really need to stop doing this. And the fourth time. But by the 4,000th time that you've returned to it, you have so seared your conscience that you have justified it. You've, and and you, you've now created a theology around it. And you're living. And this is why so many Christians say, I'm confused. You're not confused. You're double-minded. And the Bible says a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. Can I tell on myself so we can all just be in this together? Because some of you are like, Pastor Mike, I feel like I need deliverance now. Can you open up the altar? We're getting there. But can I tell you that I was an ordained pastor 15 years ago, and I was an alcoholic. I'm not talking about Christian liberties, drink and not get drunk. I'm talking about so drunk every single day struggling with the pain of trying to wrestle with the tragedies of my past and all my woundedness, trying to figure out life, that my wife, Julie, left me, and I was so drunk out of my mind that when I got home, I looked around and said, wow, she cleans so good. When I woke up the next morning sober, I realized she didn't clean. She moved out. Wow. This is me, a preacher even doing deliverance on other people, you know, and it's not an endorsement of me, but it was actually endorsement of God's love for the people I was ministering to that he graced any kind of experience at all. And so if you're here with hidden sin, there's people I know under the sound of my voice that have e-cigarettes, pills, paraphernalia in their purses. You have, I mean, we're in North Carolina, you might dip. Come on, y'all don't think I know half my family's hillbillies. I'm coming for you. Don't be fooled. My family's from West Virginia in a holler between two mountains. Come on, somebody. Yeah, you know. Don't tell me. And so you might have some things that God wants you to surrender here in this place tonight. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to do it. But when I say repentance, and I want you to hear me because I'm so serious it means not justifying it anymore, but saying, God, I want to be free, and I want to surrender it totally to you. Okay, let me go to the next thing. Are you still with me? Yes. Say the word renounce. Yes. Okay, now here. I know that y'all are watching my friends, the demon slayers, on YouTube all the time. I'm, I was talking to Isaiah and Pagani and Vlad and all of them today, and I know you see us streaming. All, and it has become popular to see viral videos where someone's manifesting like this, and then preachers got the microphone, and they say, say, I renounce. I renounce. All, this, all this. 
and they're repeating the words. But can I tell you, it's a, it's a scriptural perversion of the word and not renounce to assume that just saying it is enough. And I've got to break this down for you. Luke chapter 14, verse 33 says, so therefore, whoever of you who doesn't renounce all, somebody say all, all that he has, he can't be my, my disciple. Some of you are mad that we asked for your money. That's just some of your life. If you're not willing to renounce all, you can't be his disciple. And I just got to, this is what I'm trying to say. Are you now starting to see that the path is narrowing right before you? Are you, you now does it make more sense that there's a broad way that many people walk, but there's a narrow road. And so the only reason why demons come out when someone says, I renounce, is not because they said it. It's because they did it, and their mouth is just simply repeating what their spirit already did. Are you following with me? And I'm half teaching you how to become deliverance ministers as well. Is that all right? Because I know some of you came for an impartation of the anointing and gifting. And what we're going to do tonight is we are going to get you completely and totally free. By the way, I don't do partial deliverances because Jesus didn't do partial deliverances. <laughs> There's this, this move right now. Oh, yeah, how was so-and-so's conference? Oh, I got partially delivered. No, not, not tonight, devil. The only reason for a partial deliverance is because of partial repentance. The deeper the repentance, the deeper the deliverance. If you will go, oh, oh, if you will repent of everything, you will be delivered of everything. I didn't even know he was there. It scared me. <laughs> so people, they're telling on themselves when they're like, oh, I only got partially delivered. What I hear is there were some things you weren't willing to get up under the blood. Oh, I feel the power of God. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you listen, okay. I could preach all night, but we got to do war here in a few moments. Jesus said to his disciples, so they're already disciples. So he's taking it up another level. They've already let down their nets to come follow him. They've already left their professions. Luke, the physician, come on, they've already made the decision. So this is how raw Jesus brought it. He said, if anyone desires to follow me, let him renounce self, take up his cross, and so be my follower. We got to take it a level higher. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame. Hidden, hidden, hidden. There's some of you in this room who are tortured, and it may even be some of the saturate staff members and teams, tortured by constant thoughts of suicide, and it's a hidden shame. I have gone all over America and literally delivered pastors, pastors' children, people on staff, the children's workers who have said, I contemplate suicide every day of my life, hidden things of shame. You feel the atmosphere shifting? Oh, there are some demons that are terribly anxious right now. Y'all, I give, I give fear fear. We're going to depress depression tonight. <laughs> We're going to give the devil a feeling give him a dose of his own medicine but you have to renounce the hidden things not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully but by the manifestations of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God second Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 is it all right if I read the Bible tonight it's sharper than any two-edged sword and it divides asunder even soul from spirit there's some emotionalism that I'm trying to cut and divide so we can get this thing dealt with second Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 yet God's solid foundation stands unmoved bearing this inscription the Lord knows those who really belong to him and this also let everyone who names the name of the Lord renounce all wickedness how much wickedness come on Titus chapter 2 verse 12 training us 
training us. This means it doesn't come naturally. This means you've got to get better at it. Training us to renounce ungodliness and all the pleasures of this world and to live sober, upright, and pious lives at this present time. Training to renounce. All right, everybody say cast out. out. Repent. Repent. Renounce. Renounce. Cast Cast out. Repent, Repent. renounce, Renounce. cast out. out. See, demons hold on to the sin in our life. They hold, they they latch on to it. Repent, and then you renounce. The Greek renounce means to discard, to let it go. Some of you, you don't need a smartphone. You need a dumb phone. You need a phone without video because you have to practice renouncing. I'm serious. Some of you need an old school brick Nokia that you play snake on it in the truck at work because you have something inside of you that is so insidious and dark that even after you're delivered, your filthy flesh is going to want to open that door back to the devil and you need to slam every possibility of that door being open. You don't need it. Some of you need to go home and dump out every drop of alcohol in your house and stop excusing it because you don't need grandpa's cough syrup. Grandpa's cough syrup took him to the grave. You need to break the curse that was on grandpa and rise up in faith and live sober and stop even moving in that direction. And under the presence of God, I feel like there's some of you that the Lord has been provoking to radical evangelism and you dare not offend the Holy Spirit by going back to work tomorrow and or Monday and acting like you don't know Jesus. And my goal tonight is that you are so delivered and filled with the Holy Ghost that you don't care. I live in New York City where there's drag queen reading hour where they will let the LGBTQ plus IA and every letter of the alphabet have their agenda but when I ask them for a Bible club in the school they say no you've got to shine your light it is time for us to arise but how could you stand for Christ when you're compromised with the devil how how can you hold hands with an addiction and then hold hands with the deliverer and so today we say devil let me go I belong to Jesus, and the world is going to know, and I want to roar like the lion of the tribe of Judah on the inside of me. Ah, come on. We have five men in my New York City campus that were drag queens three months ago. All of them renounced that lifestyle and they're on the front row worshiping and they're flooding social media with their testimonies saying, go ahead and cancel me, Mark Zuckerberg. I don't work for you. I work for Jesus Christ. He's coming back for a bride without spot or blemish. And every demon is a spot. Every sin is a blemish. Let's wash the bride in the word tonight and let's do this thing. Repent, renounce, cast out. (laughs) Come on. You are born to be a wild one. Come on. There are circus lions, and then there are lions in the wild. And those circus lions don't know how to hunt because food gets brought to them. But those lions in the wild have an instinct. And see, the reason why you keep, oh, I feel the prophetic on me. The reason why you keep going into that sin is because it's a misdirected instinct. You're supposed to hunt. There's a level of a thrill. I feel like there's many thrill seekers in here. That's why you were a party animal. It was a misdirected instinct. That's why you have so much influence that your friends would always do what you're doing. But see, what happens is these circus lines, we got Christians that they only get their meat from Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and don't have any intimacy with God 
in. If you don't feed them 59 second doses of the word of God, they would never hear it as Christians themselves. And these circus lines, these clowns that we've got, that they entertain. But, but I'm telling you, God is calling the lions of the wild to awaken their instinct and to say the most dangerous place in Burgaw, North Carolina is that Walmart because when we sing spirit break out, we mean break all the way out into our schools, into our stores, into our places of work because we are on the hunt. And here's the thing. The the word of the Lord came to me and he said the hunted will now become the hunters. Come on, we got Gideon's army in this place. The hunted will now become the hunters. Shoot. (laughs) I'm just making sure I get it out of the way. So here's the thing. Last thing. And then we're going to jump in. Don't assume that as we go through this, that things that I'm mentioning don't apply to you. That is unwise. I took a 23andMe DNA test uh, about a year ago, you know, because I, my family be lying. It was like a Maury Povich episode. I was like, it came back North African. It came back all this crazy stuff. I was like, I knew I was different, Lord. What in the world? What kind of, but there, but here's the thing. There's a 1% and it said it was this Brahmin, which is from India. And this is not, you know, 23andMe is a secular company. And they said, we know how to identify. I was reading the report, and it said, we know how to identify Brahmin DNA because it was a subsect of Hinduism, and it was the Hindu high priest. So somewhere in my bloodline was a Hindu high priest, significant enough that it showed up as Brahmin in the, which is the highest in the caste system in India. So I could be chilling thinking I'm a hillbilly from West Virginia. Are you following me? You know, and I've got Sicilian, obviously Signorelli and a whole bunch of other stuff, some German. I'm, I'm a mutt. But I could be chilling thinking I don't need to renounce and repent and deal with anything in my bloodline concerning Hinduism. And the devil's like, yeah, keep believing that. So there's been many times that we do what we're about to do right now and people begin to manifest demons that they had no idea have traveled through their lineage. And so it's very unwise We've had messianic curses that we've broken. And as we've broken that curse, two generations of a family start manifesting. The dad died prematurely. Nobody knew that he was a mason. I mean, I I can't tell you how many stories. And so I want you to operate in a level of wisdom that says, God, I'm all in. The other thing, too, is as we create an environment of repentance... I like the idea that I'm going to guide you through some prayers. For example, abortion. There are people in this place who have committed abortions who are terrorized by guilt and shame every single day. And, and so, what, so there may be some prayers and things that we do that we just do it together, knowing that it may not apply to you, but there's a level of freedom that happens when we do it in unity. So there's going to be many things that we cover tonight, and then with baptisms, it's going to be incredible. So here's what I want you to do. Let's reverence the Holy Spirit for a few moments. There's also conditions. Jesus cast out the spirit of infirmity. Sometimes it was biological in nature, and sometimes it was actually supernatural. It was spiritual. There was a woman that literally was bent over for decades. He he cast the spirit of infirmity out of her, and she was able to stand up. He didn't prescribe chiropractic work. He didn't prescribe physical therapy. He didn't prescribe pain pills. He didn't even lay his hand and say, be healed, like he did in another instance, pick up your mat and walk. He said, spirit of infirmity, go. Matter of fact, the word he said is, you are loosed. He looked at the woman and said, you are loosed from the spirit of infirmity. So here's what I want to say. Some of you have conditions that the origin of it is demonic, and you you need to be delivered from that. There are many of you that maybe don't, and it is physical, but I will tell you, healing and deliverance go together. If you've been watching the live streams that we've been holding, you know, Good Friday, the Lord told me, distribute communion. 
and that he was going to do medically verifiable miracles and that I was to tell all of our campuses, go to the doctor and get a verification. And in the last couple of weeks, we have gotten a massive influx of paperwork. And it, I mean, these are legitimate documents from their doctor. And we've had lesions actually vanish off of people's livers. We've had crazy stuff. And I don't know if there's somebody in this room, PC, PCOS, cysts in their ovaries and their womb literally disappear. Literally disappear. And the pain that they produce disappear with them. So tonight is that night. So would you all stand to your feet with me? Can I have this minister of music here? We're going to just to play. Praise God. I sense right now in the room that there are some people, and you're having an internal battle where you're like, am I really going to get fully free, or is this just going to be another round? I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but the Lord wants me to confirm. Who is that? Lift up your hand in the back. <laughs> you've been, you've been, there's some, a couple of you. Okay. Amen. I want to release right now to you an impartation of faith. Father, I release faith right now. I release faith right now. Just believe. Just believe. I release faith to all those who said, I, I don't know, I'm warring. Faith, faith, let faith arise in this place. So right now, what I'm going to do before we go into specific things is that I want to allow you to have a moment with the Holy Spirit where he reveals things to you. Because there are sins that we commit intentionally, and there are other things that we do that we are not even aware of the magnitude of them. I got delivered from a spirit of worry because I had assumed that worry was a feeling instead of a sin. But worry is a sin. He commanded us not to worry. But the Holy Spirit revealed that to me. So right now, what I want you to do all over this place, and this is before I guide you through it, but I want to leave some space for you to develop a relationship with the Lord. Would you just begin to repent? That means a change of thinking. That means a change of behavior. That means, like Parker said, coming into agreement with God's ways and God's will. So right now, I'm going to give you an opportunity to just begin to repent for whatever he brings to your attention. And here's the thing, before we, because there's a, a lot of timidity in the room. Will you give permission for the person next to you to be totally undone and undignified tonight? I, I, want, I want you to... Will you give permission for the person next to you to say, I'm going to let them get free. You can do whatever you need to do. We are not going to get in the way of it. Say whatever you need to say. We're going to drive home, and it's not going to be awkward. You got to get free, and I'm going to let you undignify yourself. Because there was one woman that was willing to crawl through the crowd, but I think there's 300 people who are willing to crawl today, who are willing to act, act in desperation. So come on, let's just take a few moments right now to begin to repent of whatever the Holy Spirit is bringing to you specifically because this weakens, this weakens the enemy, this weakens the foothold that Satan has on your life. Come on, anything that you can think of that he's bringing to the forefront of your mind right now. You may begin to see people yawning. You may begin to see people twitching and convulsing. The enemy is intimidated by your repentance. Come on, go a little bit deeper. Come on, go a little bit deeper. Hey, shindri ayanomondri, hey Rebecca, hey Come on, continue to go deeper. If there's anyone that needs to bring an e-cigarette, cigarettes, dip, crack pipes, whatever you've got on you that represents counterfeit comfort, bring it up to me right now. You know what it is. 
I don't know. There's just an idolatry that needs to be broken in this moment before we go further. Whatever it is, whatever has been standing between you and God that represents that thing, bring it up to me right now. Come on. There is a strong, strong anointing for deliverance. Come on. Here it comes. Come on, man of God. Come on, man of God. There's more. Woo! Yeah. Hey. Hey. Come on. Shoot. Come on. There's more. Come on. There's more. Come on. Come on. This is, this is freedom. See, this represents counterfeit comfort. See, the enemy came and said, if you just hit this. Oh, come on. There it is. Come on. Woo-hoo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hey. Come on. There's more. Hey. Wow. Come on, son. Come on. Come on. Come over here. Come back here. Lift up your hands. Look what he gave. This has become a conduit for so much bondage. Be, be, come on, there's more. Look at these young people bringing up phones. Come on. Come on. Hey! Freedom! Wow. Freedom! Wow, yes. Come on. Come on. Let's destroy the works of darkness. Let's get it out of the way. This is revival! Shoo! <laughs> Come on. The lie of these e-cigarettes, the lie of these vapes is a counterfeit comfort. This lie says, hey, you're feeling nervous, hit this. You're feeling anxiety, hit this. But I tell you, the aroma and the fragrance of an incense. Come on, this is a counterfeit. And I say, let the glory of the Lord like a cloud begin to fill the spaces of Gen Z that give up their vapes and their e-cigarettes. And they say, there was a mist of, of nicotine. Let there be a mist of his glory. This says dissolve. Dissolve one tablet under the tongue. How many of you believe <laughs> that sickness can dissolve right now? <laughs> there ain't no healer like Jesus. Hey, Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Shoo. Yeah, come on. Come on. Wow. I'm tarrying. Some of you, I'm tarrying. Wow. 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 Come on. Something's happening. This is a repentance. We're, we're just in the first phase. This is a repentance to these Gen Z and these young people that gave up their phones. Because you were willing to destroy the idol, the Lord says, to, I'm speaking to these men here. The Lord says that you will become like a Samson that stands between the pillars and pushes down the infrastructure that is trying to poison the minds of many men. Because you were willing to give it up, you become like a Samson. Come on, is there anybody else? I'm giving you an opportunity. Is there anyone else? What else do you have? Come on. <laughs> Look at these cigarettes. Isn't it funny how people, oh yeah, come on, there's more, there's more. Oh, wow. Wow. A wallet. <laughs> come on. I hear chains rattling. Isn't it funny how when you smoke, it's a cigarette for breakfast. A cigarette for lunch, a cigarette for dinner. You know, Daniel prayed three times a day. 
Come on, I see there's something about the aroma and the fragrance of a cigarette that typically prophetic people, the Lord says, Terry, the Lord says, stay, the Lord says, step in. There's an aroma, there's a fragrance. This, this is becoming an altar before him where we say, let it burn, Lord, let it burn, Lord, let it burn, Lord, let it burn, Lord, let it burn. Come on. Here's that dip that I talked about. This is a counterfeit. Oh, it's going to help me get through the day. I, I used to work construction. I, I was a carpenter. And I'll tell you, a lot of guys who dipped, it was, I need this. This is my coffee. No, it's not. This is cancer in a can. And I will tell you this. Isn't it funny that many of these things go into your mouth? When the Bible says that the power of life and death is in the tongue. Ooh. And see, the Lord wants to release these men to begin to speak from the mouth that he fashioned in your mother's womb to begin to release the word of the Lord and to begin to pray for your wife and minister to your family. I'm going to ask just one last time. Is there anybody else? Luxury items, clothing, charms, jewelry, bracelets, pictures of dead loved ones that have passed on. I'm trying to route some things out. I got to get rid of the physical before we get rid of the spiritual. Is there anything else? Hallelujah. I command every demonic spirit that's been hiding. Oh, you have tried to be so happy, but there has been this depression. There has been this deep depression. It's felt like a cloud over your head. Am I right? Yes. And you've been even thinking about when you were younger and you say, man, I used to laugh. I used to have a level of joy. I used to dream, but it feels like there's been a stranglehold. But I speak to that spirit of Python and I command you to loose her neck now in the name of Jesus. And I command you to go to the abyss in Jesus' name. You spirit of Python that has tried to strangle her, I command you to loose her now in the name of Jesus out out there it is out depression go now You tormenting spirit, look at me. 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 You see Jesus Christ inside of me through the Holy Spirit. She is a precious daughter bought by the blood of Jesus. She does not belong to you. Look me in my eyes, demon. You have tormented her too long. And I execute judgment upon you now. Your torment ends now. And I command you to take every single demon that is anchored to you with you on the count of three. You must go to the abyss where you are sentenced to judgment. One. Two. Three. Up and out now. Go. <laughs> Come on, she's being delivered. Let's. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus. <laughs> Come on, the same Jesus. Three days later, 
came up out of the grave. There's resurrection power in this room. Come on, those demons are still coming out. <laughs> oh, come on, I love that sound. I love that sound. Come on, come on, look at me. Come on, do you feel that inside of you? There's a spirit of perversion, but that's not the true you. That's not the true you. There's been a warfare over your identity, and the devil's trying to convince you that you are somebody other than you are. Would you lift your hands? Come on, what's your name? Alex? I want you to say, Heavenly Father, I receive my identity through you. Your blood washes me, makes me new. I am who you say I am. Now I want you to do this, Alex. I want you to speak to that spirit of perversion. And I want you to say, every spirit of perversion hiding in my appetite I command you to loose me now, to come out of me. Detach yourself from my identity and come out of me. Now I want you to say this. I break and release myself from every generational curse of lust and perversion. Demon, go now. switch gears hallelujah I feel the presence of God I feel the love of the Father in this place oh I feel the love of the Father I feel the love of the Father I feel the love of the Father in this room and I've got to say this I know there's children but it starts at a young age there is a lot of sexual abuse in this room there is a lot there's incest in this room I feel it in the spirit right now. There's a lot of sexual abuse in this room. What we're going to begin to do right now, some of you, you might need to close your eyes to remove the distractions. Wave your hand if you're a prayer team member, the repent and baptize people. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to deal with sexual abuse and because the Lord has shown me that there's these strong men that are anchoring some of you the lust and the perversion and you feel so guilty why do I go back to pornography why do I go back to masturbation why do I go back to these sins but the Lord showed me some of you it's actually sexual abuse in your past and so I want these prayer team members we're going to begin to pray there's going to be many manifestations in this place and I want you to go and just simply lay your hand on their shoulder or their head and I want you to command these demons fully out okay this team is already trained and anointed to begin to work on my behalf and on behalf of the Lord. Amen. Just close your eyes if you need to remove a distraction. Because the enemy right now is trying to distract some of you. I can feel it. I want you to, whew, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I give you all of my trauma, all of my pain, every memory. Unlock every doorway unlock every memory everything that I've tried to forget I give you access to my full emotions my full mind even my body where the trauma happened 
This is your temple. The temple of the Holy Spirit. Who I feel the love of God. I break and release myself from every curse on my mother and father's side of incest, of molestation, of rape. The curse is broken by the blood of Jesus. Every demonic spirit connected to the curse up and out now in the name of Jesus. Go! Every single demonic spirit connected. Go! Out now! Out! Come on, there it is. Out! Out! Go! Go! Lust, perversion. Go now! Lust of the eyes. Come out of their eyes now. There it is. Don't cooperate with the devil. Come on, let it go. Release, release, release. Lust of the hands, come out of their hands now. Come out of their bodies. Molestation, sexual abuse, trauma. Come out of their body now. Out, out, out. Come on, prayer team, begin to lay your hands. Come on, out, now, now, now. Now, now. Now, out, every demonic spirit, I speak to you. You must go. You must go. You must go. Right now, out, out, out. on the Holy Spirit is doing the work the Holy Spirit is doing the work the Bible says by the finger of God deliverance happens right now the finger of God is delivering people come on come on every spirit of guilt and shame that's connected to sexual trauma come out of their mind right now guilt and shame and condemnation come out of their mind right now up and out all shame come out all shame shame come out 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 condemnation come out I break your curse yes you will come out yes you will condemnation you will come out you will all condemnation every spirit that keeps repeating the lie that they are not good enough, that they're not worthy. Condemnation, go! Condemnation, shame, guilt, go! 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 Yes, come on. Come on, whoever just yelled that out, I'm proud of you. Come on, somebody's taking a stand. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. Take your mind back, says the Lord. Take your mind back. Yeah. Take it back. Shame, shut up. Shut up, shame. I am not a victim. That spirit of victim, come out. Whew. I feel a release of the power of God. Oh. <laughs> There's just gonna be waves of deliverance. Some of you are gonna feel wind, like a fresh wind that's blowing over you. And the Lord says there's gonna be a wind. Some of you are gonna start getting delivered spontaneously because the Holy Spirit is gonna to begin to blow through this place. A fresh wind, 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 a fresh wind. blow. Lord, I thank you. 
just as it was in Pentecost, just as it was in Pentecost. Oh, I hear in the spirit that somebody just said on the inside of them, I finally don't care. I want to get free, God. I feel something breaking in the spirit realm right now. Somebody is saying, I don't care anymore. Um, I feel a Jacob in the room. I feel somebody who says, I'm about to wrestle until he changes my name tonight. I never want to be the same. Okay, this next part, I'm going to continue to go. Now listen, there's going to be people who still receive deliverance for molestation, rape, lust, but I've got to keep going and we'll allow the Holy Spirit to co-labor. But clear as day, I heard the Holy Spirit say, deal with unforgiveness. Deal with unforgiveness. Yeah, come on. Come on. Yeah, we're coming for you, devil. We're dealing with unforgiveness. Okay, the Holy Spirit works with us. The Holy Spirit is both inside of you and inside of me. And he's also in the atmosphere. He's omnipresent. Amen? So what we're going to begin to do right now, the Holy Spirit is going to bring to your remembrance. The Holy Spirit is going to bring to your, your, the forefront of your mind everyone that you are supposed to forgive. I got it, Kirk. I got it. Now, Oftentimes in these moments, people's faces will flash in front of you that you haven't thought of in years. Also, people's faces will flash in front of you that you thought that you forgave. And you've got to be faithful to step fully into this moment of forgiveness. There's also people who have died. And there's some of you in this place that you, you are mad at your own biological father for dying. Yeah, come on. You're mad at your own biological father for dying and you feel guilty about being mad and then you actually need to forgive yourself and your father. There's some of you in this place that need to forgive pastors. There's some of you that need to forgive those people that hurt you in your past. There's some of you that when I said molestation, rape, incest, you need to forgive family members. And I'm telling you, the Bible says that you cannot ask God for forgiveness and yet hold unforgiveness against those that have sinned against you. So as we begin to pray for forgiveness, you're going to begin to see medically verifiable miracles break out all over this place. Now listen, I know it's pandemonium right now. It's only going to get crazier because the Lord told me that what he did tonight is going to be one of the most powerful demonstrations of his spirit that has happened in America because there's faith in this room. Is there anybody here with neuropathy? Wave at me. You? Anybody else? Neuropathy. Tingling. Numbness. Okay, is there anybody here with carpal tunnel? Okay, is there anybody here that has, um, Lord, help me. It's almost like your joints and your tendons. Anybody? Arthritis. Okay, man, many of you with arthritis. Let me tell you a secret of the kingdom. The Bible says that bitterness rots your bones. There's many of you that as you go through the, I feel the power of God. As you go through the process of forgiveness, you are going to find neuropathy and many conditions like the ones I mentioned begin to be healed instantly. There is a, man, I feel the power of God so strong. I can hardly stand up here. But here's what I'm going to say. If there's a demon of unforgiveness, you'll know because it's going to be very difficult to say this person's name out loud that you must forgive. And if you feel like I can't say their name, I haven't said their name in years, you need to forgive them. So all over this place, from the front to the back, 
I'm gonna count to three and we're gonna take about 30 seconds and we're all gonna say the names and I, here's the thing, I want you to say I forgive and then the person's name. And if you need to forgive yourself, you're gonna also begin to say I forgive myself. Some of you, oh, I feel the power. Can I go, before we do that, I wanna make sure you have a full understanding of what you're accessing in the spiritual realm. Because there's some of you that this forgiveness it's so important for you to understand because you said, I should have went to college, but I messed up. I got pregnant too young. I messed up. I should have stayed with this person. I messed up. And there's all this like a ball of yarn. It gets knotted in your stomach and you carry around like a dead baby, like a dead dream on the inside of you. And you know, if you don't remove that carcass, it ends up killing you. And so unforgiveness has been like this dead dream, this dead expectation. I hear the Lord saying that there are many of you that have broken expectations. I hear somebody in the spirit saying, life shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't have happened like that. They shouldn't have died. It shouldn't have ended. And there's a deep spirit of grief and mourning that's going to come out of you. There's going to be seasons and seasons that come out of you. So lift your hands towards heaven. On the count of three, I want every single person here to utter the names of every single person that the Holy Spirit shows you. And as you begin to say, I forgive them, you are going to be loosed and set free. One, two, three. Now begin to do it. I'm going to call out names as a prophetic confirmation. I forgive Tim. I forgive Joe. I forgive Susan. I forgive Sandra. I forgive Craig. I forgive John. Come on, begin to call it out. Go deeper in forgiveness. I forgive my ex-wife. I forgive my ex-husband. I forgive my ex-husband. Somebody say that in the spirit. If you need to begin to say that, I forgive them. I release them from abandoning me, walking out on me. I forgive my father. I forgive my stepfather. Oh, I feel the anointing on that. Somebody needs to say, I forgive. You hear the demons manifesting? Come on. Woo! I forgive my stepfather. I forgive my stepmother. Woo! Somebody's coming out of a cage. Come on. Take a few more moments. Somebody was bullied in school. Forgive that person who bullied you. Say their name. If you remember, say their first and last name. Because the devil hates hearing you say it. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. Come on. Say their name. Somebody's forgiving a teacher. That teacher said something to you. Somebody's forgiving a coach. A coach said something over you. Somebody is forgiving. I, I'm seeing this in the spirit realm right now. Wow. I forgive my cousin. I forgive my uncle. I forgive my aunt. Come on. Take a few more moments. Come on, forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. Some of you haven't said these names in years. I feel led by the Lord to give you just a few more moments of forgiveness. Somebody's saying, my mother wasn't enough, but I know she tried. I forgive her. I speak to every spirit of grief and mourning. Some of you have lost loved ones, and what should have been a season of grief turned into a cycle of grief. Some of you have said, life has never been the same since they died. Some of you have made vows with your mouth and you've said, I'll never laugh like I laugh with them. I'll never be happy like I was with them. And the Lord says, you cursed yourself. 
I break the curse. I break the curse of grief and command every spirit, every grieving, mourning spirit to come out of them now. Out. Out. Every orphan spirit, come out now. Every orphan spirit, come out now. Every spirit of fatherlessness, go. If you just prayed for forgiveness and you, or you know you forgave other people, I want you to say these words with me right now. I want you to say, Heavenly Father, I have forgiven as you have forgiven me. And now I break and release myself from every curse of unforgiveness, every demonic spirit connected to that curse of unforgiveness come out of me now loose me now go now Jesus name I command every demonic spirit there it is out of her out of her you are not what happened to you you are what God is doing to you right now he is restoring the years that the locust and the canker worm have eaten and you are a daughter of the king and every demonic spirit that violated your body I command to go now out of her body from every cell, every fiber, every membrane, every tendon, I command you to root yourself out and go. That violating spirit. Look at me. Silence. Incubus. <laughs> Incubus. You took. <laughs> you don't you dare speak to a servant of the king like that. You are experiencing your final moments on planet Earth. You took so much satisfaction in not just what you've done to her body, but the bodies that you violated for generations. You ancient spirit of incubus, I right now bind you and I command you to come out of her and I command you to go to the abyss where you will await final judgment. Go now! Out! 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 Every curse of Satanism broken now in the name of Jesus. Every curse of witchcraft broken now in the name of Jesus. Every curse broken now in the name of Jesus. Succubus, go now in the name of Jesus. The angel of the Lord smites you now. Out. Every curse is broken from satanic ritual abuse. Come out from the root. Come out. She's bought by the blood of the lamb and you do not own her. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth and you believe that he is the Messiah, that you will be saved. She is confessed. She belongs to Jesus. There it is. Go. 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 Out. Come on, there it is. There it is. There it is. Come on. <laughs> Come on.
Bom. Come on, take a deep breath. Come on, daughter of God. Come on, beloved daughter, take a deep breath. Thank you, Father. We're going to continue on. There's more. <laughs> there was a lot of manifestations during witchcraft. No. We live in a day and age. Now, I want to help you understand because we're dealing with things. I'm trying to be as thorough as possible. Now, all this on the stage, many of these things that are represented, this, this is pharmakia. See, like this is rooted in witchcraft in and of itself. So there's some of you who are like, I've never done witchcraft. Oh, yes, you have. Because this in and of itself is listed in Scripture as pharmakia. Some of you have done recreational drug use. And don't you love that term, recreational? Doesn't the devil make it sound fun? There's nothing recreational about drug use. You know who used to do? It's shaman. Shaman have rituals connected to smoking. Witchcraft has always been rooted in intoxication. Ayahuasca, DMT, acid trips. These are connected to a spirit of witchcraft because witchcraft is manipulation, domination, and control. So some of you are like, I'm good. Never put a pentagram in salt in my living room. But you smoked in your living room and you smoked in a circle. <laughs> Come on, are you seeing it? Same demons, different dynasty. Same demon, different day. Ancient spirits with just new packaging. The devil is a liar. So I want to deal with witchcraft. And some of you need to get that dealt with in this room. Because what you thought was, oh, we were chilling, Pastor Mike. We were hanging out. We were having fun. We were sowing our wild oats. You were, you were put, placing a curse on your life. You need to be free. Ouija boards, consulting the dead. Okay, let me go a step further. Do you all still love me? Necromancy is strictly forbidden many times in the Old Testament. Oh, Pastor Mike, I've never done that. You talk to your dead loved one and you've said stuff to them, but the Bible says to be absent from the bodies, to be present from the Lord, present to the Lord. The Bible is very clear. After we die, it's heaven or hell. That's it. And so you've had these conversations. You go to their grave. Oh, mom, if you were still here. Oh, dad, if you were still here. Oh, and you're talking, and the devil's like, keep talking because you're sinning. I've got you. I, and see, remember I said we have to expose. There was hundreds of laws in the Old Testament. Jesus didn't say, I came to do away with the laws. He says, I am the fulfillment of the law. So you have to come into alignment with this. So here's what we're going to deal with in this room. We're going to deal with recreational drug use, which was witchcraft. We're going to deal with consulting and talking to the dead, including your loved ones who could not hear you, which is also witchcraft. We're going to talk, we're going to talk about psychic mediums. Oh, Pastor Mike, I don't do that. Witch talk, hashtag witch talk. We've got these things on social media, so, horoscopes consulting to get your future and if there's a prophetic call in your life you take the bait and you say well i want to know i went to a psychic medium these things come in many different forms are you guys with me for for a little bit longer i can't tell if it's quiet because you're tired or i can't tell if it's you're quiet because you're like oh no but let me just say i know it's hot under the tent but these things take time and you've got see Okay, now I love this point in the night because this happens. I'm a revivalist, and this happens all over the world. When we get to this point in the night, I want to tell you, do you remember that scripture that says, resist the devil? You want to know why he says resist? Because he's counting on you giving up right now. Yeah, praise God. Oh, come on now. He's counting on you getting tired. He's counting on you saying, this was cool. This was a great night. I'm ready to go home. There's something about resist. There's something about I'm digging in. Can we go a little bit deeper? We're almost done. Can you guys go a little bit deeper? Hallelujah. Resist the devil and he will flee. Remember, partial deliverance is partial repentance. 
Come on, everybody right now, let's begin to do this together. Say, Heavenly Father, I repent for all recreational drug use, for necromancy, for talking to the dead, for consulting psychics, Ouija boards, smoking, anything that I've done in the form of witchcraft. I thank you that by your blood, the curse is broken. Okay, watch this. Even in the bloodline, on my mother's side and my father's side, all witchcraft, all ancient spirits connected to the occult, occult practices, the Masonic Lodge, faulty anointing on that, secret societies, oaths, pledges. I cancel the curse from native cultures. From native cultures. I cancel the curse. I break it now. All demons connected to the curses that are now broken by the blood of Jesus come out of me now. Leave now. Up and out. Out in the name of Jesus. Now. Out, out, out. Native American demons come out now in the name of Jesus. Native American spirits come out now. Every deity come out now. Islam. I cancel the curse of Islam now. I command the prophet Muhammad in Islam. Come out of them now in the name of Jesus. Hinduism, the Vedas, I cancel the curse, leave them now. Out, out, out in the name of Jesus. (sighs) Come on. Come on. Come on. false religion denominationalism I break the power of denominationalism the spirit of religion the Lord sets his face against you now the spirit of tradition the traditions of men I break and release every person under the sound of my voice from the religion and tradition of men the doctrines taught by demons cessationism I break your curse in the name of Jesus leave them now and then okay yeah there it is out 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 if you need freedom because the Lord is trying to bring you into the gifts of the spirit but you feel tortured because there's something that tells you you shouldn't speak in tongues you shouldn't prophesy you shouldn't worship this extravagantly i want you to just come into this space right here i want you to leave your seat right now and come out because there's a spirit of religion spirit of religion something that says who are you to speak in tongues who are you to prophesy Yeah, come on. Aren't you glad that we resisted? Aren't you glad that we resisted? Come on. Let's wreck the devil's kingdom. Spirit of religion. Your time is up. The children of God are going to be free. The prophet Joel said that the Lord will pour out his spirit among all flesh the sons and daughters will prophesy the old men will dream dreams and i declare that they will step into the fullness of the spirit right now i speak to every demon that has been infiltrating their prayer life infiltrating their mind lying to them about what they have access to and i command you to come out now come out of their mind come out of their mind stop muzzling their tongue Go, 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 go. Come out of this woman now. Come out of this woman. Loose her now in the name of Jesus. Let her go. You can't have her life. 
You can't have her purpose. You can't have her mouth. She will speak the word of the Lord. She will preach and do what God's called her to do. And you will not silence her anymore. I break your power now. I break your power now. I break your power now. Loose her in the name of Jesus. Loose her mouth right now. Come on, there it is. Loose her mouth right now. I take the muzzle off now. Yes, you will go. Yes, you will loose her. Right now, you spirit of Jezebel that has tried to intimidate her and dominate her and even control her through leadership, I cut and sever every ungodly soul tie from toxic abuse and narcissism that's tried to control her. Yes, she will not be controlled anymore, Jezebel. You will not manipulate her anymore. I sever every ungodly soul tie and command you out in the name of Jesus. There it is. There it is. There it is. Oh. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. There's a wave. Come on. There's a wave hitting. If you want it, receive it. There's a wave hitting. There's a wave hitting. Come on, there's a fresh wind blowing. Receive it, receive it. Come on, this place is lifting. The glory of the Lord is lifting. It's lifting, it's lifting. Come on, there's a wave. Oh, there's a wave. There's a wave. is returning to the city (laughs) the ark is returning to the city do you hear the sound of angels wings there's an exceedingly great army do you hear the sound of angels wings all around you the angels of deliverance the angels of harvest the angels to assist are here The glory of the Lord is rising. I want to do something. I, I have a special assignment. Is there a pastor here who's been struggling with suicide. A pastor. Maybe it's just severe depression or something deep down inside. Something, a minister. Maybe it's a minister. A minister or a pastor. Come. Wow. Your minister. What's that? Say it again. Children's pastor. No, don't feel bad. Shoo. Can I tell everybody what you just said? Remember, confess one to another. You'll be healed. She said, so this is a children's pastor of a local church. She had an opportunity last night because her, it's your pastor said there's somebody contemplating suicide. A revival pastor last night said there's somebody contemplating suicide and you need to come up. And she said, I didn't come up and I've been feeling bad. And God gave you another opportunity because of his great love for you because of how much your life matters and because God's called you to a work no man started you so no man can stop you you were initiated you were started by God 
But see, you came up here for more than freedom from suicide. The Lord's about to set you free from many different things. So I want you to lift your hands once again. What's your name? Sassy? Oh, I love your name. Your name is Sassy? Oh, praise God. Sassy, prophetic people, they usually have an assignment of suicide. Elijah sat under the tree and said, Lord, I'm the only prophet left. Now they want to kill me. I I just want to give up. Because, see, the fact that you are a pastor over children means that you must be a visionary to impart prophetic insights into their life. And, see, just as there's the school of the prophets, there's more for your life to even begin to release. Not We don't need... We don't need the coloring book version of Christianity for our children. We need children that there is no junior Holy Spirit. We need children that are ignited with the fire and the passion of the Holy Spirit. And you carry that. You will live and not die. You will live and not die. And you will declare the works of God in the land of living. I cancel the spirit of death. I cancel the curse of suicide. Every bit of dysfunction, every bit of perversion of identity, and I release right now identity from the Father, from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, now in the name of Jesus. Receive it, Jesus' name. Suicide, loose her now. Repetition of thought. I pull down every stronghold in her mind. Yes, thank you. Every stronghold even from the past 10 years ago 20 years ago 30 years ago i go back now there it is the anointings all over you and i tear down every single repetitious thought every single thought every single thought there it is the strongholds are coming down the nest i dismantle the nest that that rat suicide has tried to place i dismantle it now in the name of jesus you will be tormented no more the lord says that you will actually begin to sleep The Lord says, I'm restoring your sleep. I'm restoring your sleep. The Lord says, this will be a key marker and a sign to you that your sleep is being extended. The Lord says, you'll have a full night's sleep and it'll be a key marker and a sign that you are free and delivered because the sleep represents restoration. Who else needs a restoration in their sleep? Oh, wow. I heard right. I want to say this over you. Don't think it's strange that prophetic dreams are released in sleep and yet you've had a disturbance in your sleep because there's a call for you to dream. There's a call for you to dream. Just as Joseph dreamed, you will dream. You will dream. Right now, if you need that, just lift your hands as a sign. Father, I release supernatural slumber. I release a sleep to come over them tonight, a restoration of sleep. But every vexing, tormenting spirit that's connected to this sabotaging of sleep, I break your power right now. Somebody lay your hands right here on this woman, right there. Just lay your hand on her head. Every single spirit that has tried to torment her in the mind, in the mind, in the mind. I break your power now and command you to go. Tormenting spirit, vexing spirit, come out of her mind right now in the name of Jesus. Out. I break the curse of premature death off of you now. I break the curse of premature death off of you. You've been feeling like, am I going to die, God? Am I going to die? The Lord says, no, a season is dying, but a rebirth is happening right now, and you're stepping in. Now, strength, strength. You will run and not grow weary. You will walk and not faint. Strength, now. Woo. Holy Ghost, fire, fire, passion, says the Lord, passion, says the Lord. All lethargy, all tiredness, all chronic illness, 
Go, leave her body. Every spirit of passivity, loose her now in the name of Jesus. Go. Oh, your body's transforming right now. Underneath this woman's hand on your head, the cells of your body are regenerating and you are actually experiencing a renewal right now. And the Lord says, I am, re yeah, there it is, a power of God. More, 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 more glory, more glory. Shoo! Hallelujah. He makes his mercy new every day. Ha! Who else? I see the Lord sticking his finger in a clock and dialing it backwards. Have you been feeling like you're dying? Who's struggling with this thought? Am I dying? Am I dying? Okay. Come on, lift your hands. Don't be ashamed. Don't be. You? Oh, man, my heart is so moved with compassion seeing your face. You've been through a lot, and you have endured, and you have fought so hard. And matter of fact, you have fought on other people's behalf, and you've had to be the strong one. You know what the Lord told me to tell you? Now I show myself strong on your behalf. L let her look at me real quick. I want you to hear me say this because it's from your papa. Yeah, it's breaking. Whew. This is from your heavenly father. You are not too old for a father. And I look at me. The Lord says, let's trade places. Come on. You know what that means. Let's trade places. Oh, you're going to, I see you coloring. I see you doing art. I see you having a renewal of creativity. The Lord says, I'm restoring. I'm restoring. This is, oh, come on. Look, your face is changing. Your face is, there it is. Something's coming out right now in your face. Wow. Do you see this? Do you see this? Yeah. As soon as I said trade places, it broke off of you. Do you feel it? There's going to actually be a supernatural extension on your life because the Lord says, I am a restorer. He, he what? He told me that. <laughs> well, of course he did because we have the same dad and I hear him too. You're... Come on, just let, now, now, now I got a word for you though, and I've waited all night for this. Didn't you just get married or something? Oh, there, that's your boo kitty? That's your boo thing? Here, come over by him, but kind of stay by her because you're going to pray in a second. You know, and I got, I saw this immediately when I walked in. There's something about my life that you carry a similar familiar anointing. Are you, what, am I confirming something? Okay. Yeah, and the Lord, it was like something about like when I looked at you, you weren't looking at me with like a normal look. You were connecting with a mantle. You were connecting with the familiarity of the anointing. And then I watched you today. Because I said, okay, I want to see if I get a confirmation, and you're a servant. And there's a level of humility that you carry that you say, God, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. And so I want to pray for you guys because there's like a joining together, and there's like a co-laboring, and there's an anointing that flows through that humility. I also believe that you're going to be a significant source of encouragement to this ministry. You know, like that, that, uh, that, that bringing together like a Moses and an Aaron lifting up the hands that give way. And so the Lord's going to continue. But the last thing I want to say to you, and this is a word of, com uh, of confirmation. <laughs> the Lord says, I'm, I'm giving you me. I'm giving you a person, not a plan. And you've been saying, I want a plan. And the Lord says, I'm giving you me. <laughs> because as you follow the person... Your wife will follow you following him because her destiny is caught up in your ability to follow him. And so God's saying, I'm not giving you a plan. I'm giving you me. And then it becomes an adventure. So just lift your hands. Come a little closer. Father, I release right now certainty. I really release right now the peace that surpasses all understanding. Your yes and your yieldedness 
is the plan. God, what do I do? Yes. Where do I go? Yes. What do I do? Yes. And because you've been yielded. So, Father, we thank you for the anointing on his life right now. And, Father, I thank you for a confirmation today that you would do it. Father, we thank you for a release. I see you on a staircase, and you just taking, keep going up from glory to glory. And the Lord says you will graduate greater levels of glory. You will graduate greater levels of glory. Okay, one last thing, and this is why I got my hand on your head. I break and release you from the curse of smallness. The Lord says, I don't give you permission to limit what I've created to be unlimited. Father, I thank you. Yo, that's right. There it is. There it is. Prophetic vision. Let them see it, Lord. Let them see it. I keep hearing the Lord say, yes, you. 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 Right now. Shoot. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit speak to you the rest because he's speaking right now. He's getting a download. All right, Lord. Are you guys still with me a little bit longer? Okay. So we, we dealt with the pastor that was suicidal. I'm trying to make sure I go through everything the Lord told me to. We dealt with religion and tradition. Now, I will tell you how this ends. I already know how it ends. I know we're going to do baptisms towards the end but I also believe that there's going to be a baptism of the Holy Spirit and I believe there's many of you that desire the gift of tongues <laughs> what did somebody yell out in the back well let me okay we're getting there hold, hold your horses <laughs> man I like y'all we're getting there yeah look look at this guy get him Lord so You come come right here. Where man, Parker, I need your help with this one. I need your help right here. So here's what we're gonna do. This is it's crowded, but and I, I want to start with you, but this can be for many people in the room. So my father cheated on my mom. My father ruthlessly beat my mom physically and then left her. And when I was two years old, I was already the product of divorce. She got married multiple times to multiple abusive stepdads. They all repeated the behavior. And I had an orphan spirit on my life. And yet there's other men that have a good father in the fact that they provided financially, but an absent father in other ways. Is that you? I'm calling some things out. And so I feel like the Lord wants me to deal with the issue of father in this place. And he wants to, there needs to be some freedom connected to that area. And there's some of you that your father was cold. He never said, I love you. There's, there's men in here 65 years old. You never heard your dad say he's proud of you. And you've grieved that your whole life. And you've been desperate to hear he's proud of you. And I don't know your story. But I know that God highlighted you to me when I first walked in this tent. And I believe that you do not know or understand the fullness of how proud your heavenly father is of you. And you keep saying, but I haven't done it yet. I haven't accomplished enough. And the Lord says, you're already a success because you're mine. You're already a success. I'm letting that settle in. And the reason why I'm saying this to you now is because the Lord says it begins today. But I needed to tell you I was proud of you before it all happens so that you remember. Because oh. he's marking you so that you remember that before it ever happened, he was already proud of you. And you're going to do all the things that God showed you from a place of approval, not for it. Because the Lord is affirming you. And the other thing is that you're an image bearer of the Father. Do you have spiritual sons or people like that that look to you as, as somebody? There's more. 
There's more because you're an image bearer of the Father, and you're going to break that off of them as well. Where's your biological father? Miss, do you have a relationship with him? It's a good relationship, and he was a good man. Come on. But he was there in a lot of ways. Or no. Come on, I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt, but you're just confirming what I saw the whole time. But you know why God's proud of you? Because you're the man that you needed in that previous season. And you said, it stops with me. Do you have children? Are they here? Okay. That's all right, because you're the priest of your home. You're going to bring this revival back to them. How old are they? Eight, 13, and 16. So your quiver is full. I'm going to give you an assignment because I'm going to pray for you right now. When you, when it's, whether it's tonight or tomorrow, I want you to get them in the living room. And I want you to tell them, lift your hands. And as the priest of your home, because you're going to, I'm going to light your torch and you're going to light their torch because there's going to be a ripple that happens right now. And I want you to lay hands on them. And I want you to say, as their father, I feel the anointing. I want you to say, I break every generational curse over my kids on their mother and father's side. And I stand as the priest of my home. And I'm telling you, there's some things. This is a prophetic warning. There's some things that have snuck into your home that you don't even know about. But the Lord says, I've gotten up ahead of it. And I've stopped it. And I'm going to use you to lift up a holy standard. And then you are going to kick those things out of your house. And you're going to get a double blessing. And then you're going to begin to get promoted. And the Lord's going to bring you into some visions he showed you, okay? Will you be obedient to do that? Because I'm telling you, what are they, uh, sons or daughters? How old's the daughter? Yes. That's okay. But, but when you pray for her, she's going to have a major breakthrough because there's some silent pain. I don't know what it is, but you're about to come in and intervene. Mark it. You're about to come in and intervene, okay? You're a good dad, but you're going to be a great dad. <laughs> you're going up from glory to glory. So lift your hands towards heaven. Parker's got his hand on your belly because from your belly will flow rivers of living water. You will be a man of intercession and prayer. You are the high priest of your home and you walk with authority. And right now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, I release the anointing right now. The burden removing, yoke destroying power of God in the name of Jesus that you will break every curse and you will move in the fullness. Is this an answer to your prayer? Come on over here, woman of God. The Lord just told me this is an answer to your prayer. Because you've been faithful, because you've prayed, the Lord says you're stepping into the next level. You're step, But the Lord says you're stepping in together. So lift your hand a little bit higher. Come on, woman of God. Come on, prophetess. Come on. The Lord says that promotion does not come from the east or the west, but promotion comes from me. And the Lord says, I have seen oh, now the anointing. I release it now. More, God. Increase. More. Come on, let me hear that heavenly language. Come on, unapologetically. Come on, boldly. Come on. Unlock the well. Undam it, God, now. Release it now in the name of Jesus. Woo! Yeah, come on, both of them. Come on, there's a drunkenness coming over them. Look at this. There's a drunkenness. New wine. New wine. Flow. New wine. Flow. Drink. 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 <laughs> come on, son. Drink. Drink. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, drink. <laughs> Come on, there it is. Oh, y'all, ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party up in here. Woo! Come on, just let him take it. Come on, let him take it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Your daddy hadn't tasted it, but the son has tasted and seen that the Lord is good. <laughs>